Hi, and welcome back to Brentwood Stories. In today's episode, C and I catch up with former page Jessica Ferrara. Jessica shares her memories from working at Brentwood Library and tells us about her journey to becoming a veterinary doctor. Sit back and enjoy. So, my name is Jessica Ferrara. Um, I started working at the Brentwood Library in 2012. It was my first job. I was 16. It was like the summer before my junior year of high school, and I was super excited. <laughs> um, it was it was a great experience. I loved working there. Um, but I worked there uh, throughout the rest of high school. So I worked there for two years. And then I worked there this summer after my first year of college. So like, I guess like three-ish years total. Um, yeah, and then um, I went to New Jersey uh, for college. Uh, I graduated, oh, so I should start with Brentwood. Um, mm-hmm. I graduated Brentwood High School in 2014. Um, and then I went to New Jersey for college. I went to Seton Hall University. Um, I majored in biology, had a minor in Italian studies. Um, and then I went to Ross University right after college. I graduated college in 2018. I went to Ross University School of Veterinary Medicine in St. Kitts in the Caribbean. Um, and then I have, I did two and a half years there. I have, and then one year in the U.S. we had to do for our clinical year where we're actually in the hospital working with real patients, real animals. Um, so I'm finishing that up. I have a month left. So I have a month left of vet school. You've certainly been busy. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I've not stopped. <laughs> what kind of work did you do when you were at the library? I was a page at the library in the, in the adult um, department. Now, I met your parents while I was teaching and training Boy Scouts mm-hmm. in uh, Brentwood. And your family was really, really involved in yeah. scouting. And mm-hmm. I remember you after a few years um, joining Venture Crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so tell us what motivated you to go. Was it from seeing your brother in scouts and your family being involved? Yeah. So it was a lot of both. Um, my brother always got to do fun trips and and do like, He got to go camping on these like really involved trips where they had like itineraries planned out of things he would do every day. And I always thought that was super cool. And we would always, my mom and I would come to visit them and and Roy was like, all right, I'm off to go, you know, woodworking or, you know, rock climbing or something like that. And I was like, well, that's cool. I want to do something (laughs) like that. And then they, they had venturing came out when I think I was like 15, 14 or 15. And, um, and then we got to do stuff like that. Um, So tell people about venturing because they don't realize that, that there is this co-ed. Yeah. So it was, it was literally, that's what it was, co-ed scouting. And we were able to focus our venture crew um, on things we were interested in. So the group that we were part of, were really interested in cooking and photography specifically. So we did a lot of um, activities and trips involved with those specific topics. Now, did you start the garden at the Sisters of St. Joseph's community no. garden, or did you work at the community garden? For some reason, we, I remember we you worked at, working yeah. there at the community garden. Yeah, we the scouts were involved with it. Um, and then my mom was really involved with it afterwards. It was mostly her project. That um that she took over after the scouts, um, but it was it was a community garden that a lot of community members could have you know a, a piece of land in and grow uh, vegetables and fruits and things. So now when you go back to that property and you see how many farms are actually on <laughs> that property now, and oh, yeah. and how wonderful it is, uh, that must bring back memories to you of your little small garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to. I need to actually visit there. It's been a long time, but yeah, I should. There are some sure. wonderful Amazing. farms there, and I know uh, they have expanded all over the property and mm-hmm. and really uh, made 
the property parts of it environmentally protected so that yeah. it stays as, as farmland. And, and I think that's wonderful for uh, our residents here in the yeah. community. I think she was, I think it might've been a different project mm -hmm. that she was involved in. I don't know if it was exactly Sisters of St. Joseph, but it was a, it was a, it was a, I think it was like, some kind of charity house in Brentwood that she mm -hmm. did it for. Yeah. Okay. So how did your love of animals begin? Oh man. I was so little, like how so far little. back do you remember that you really, did you have pets as a, as a uh, yeah. small, small child that you remember? Yeah. I, I, I had a dog like from, she was born before I was, but I grew up with her lucky. She was, she was awesome. What type um, of dog was Lucky? She was like a black lab mix, mixed breed. My, my family got her from North Shore Animal League. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved her. She was like, whatever about me. But <laughs> I like to think we're <laughs> best friends. Um, and then I got, a, we got another dog when I was like a couple years old. And he was, he was so sweet. He and I were, were best friends and played a lot. Uh, we somehow inherited a bird from someone that we had for a couple of years that I used to play with and, and he used to bite me, but I still loved him. <laughs> um, had some fish growing up. I never had like, you know, hamsters or anything like that, but I, I used to, I remember watching um, on my old, old TV in my room that was like this big. I used to watch Animal Planet and watch Steve Irwin. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to ask my mom for books about dog breeds so I can read about them. And I would like pulling them out on the street. Like it, it started, I was really, really young. And then whenever we were at a family friend's house or a family member's house, oh, you'd always find me playing with the dog or the cat or whatever pet they had. So at what point in your life did you decide, hey, this is what I'd really like to do, my field of study and what I'd like yeah. to be? I, I, th I always wanted to be a doctor of some sort. I, I have like a preschool book at my house that says, when I grow up, I want to be a doctor <laughs> for some reason. And then um, I, well, we used to go with my, my dog when I was little and I was like, wow, this is, I could do this. Like I love animals and I want to help them feel better. And, and it kind of came from there. I look back at some of the photos of pages from years back and I found a photo of you <laughs> on the grass at Brentwood Library hugging a goat. Um, I remember <laughs> we had a children's petting zoo that came yeah. to visit. And as we that. always do, they asked for some extra help and none of my pages wanted to participate. <laughs> Smelly animals, I'm not doing it. I might step <laughs> in something, but you were the first one to volunteer to get out there. And uh, you really made kids feel comfortable petting oh, the yeah. animals. And, you know, a lot of these children have never been exposed to different types of animals like we had mm -hmm. at, at the petting zoos. Mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed that you were always really patient, you know, with the kids um, oh. and, and teaching them. So did you enjoy some of these programs that we had at the library while you were a page? Oh, yeah. I, I loved when I tell you I loved working at the library. <laughs> Like, I loved it. And I loved, like, especially when there was like a special project, mm -hmm. like, hey, Jess, I need you to do this, this, and this. And I was like, I'll do it. Like, whatever it was. I loved working with, with Mrs. P downstairs and like processing the new things. Um, I loved whenever you had a blood drive and I could help out and like, you know, sign people in, like any kind of special project. And I liked the day-to-day -day stuff too. So, and, and, um, and yeah, I loved all the programs that we did. So what motivated you to apply for a job at the library? I, I wanted to start being like more independent. I was, I was older at that point. I was going to start driving and I wanted to, you know, fend for myself a little bit more. Um, and I, I already knew so much of the staff. I knew you. I knew a couple of the, the people who worked at the circulation desk. I knew a couple of pages because some of the pages were, were Boy Scouts too. So I thought it would be a great work environment. And it was close to school that I could walk to school and walk back from. It was close to home. So I just thought like, you know, all the pieces fit for me. 
Oh, very good. Going back to your to your current career path, uh, mm-hmm. were there any uh, are, are any notable challenges that you overcame when you were learning to become a vet and learning to take care of animals? That would be noteworthy maybe for anyone that was interested in the field. Yeah, yeah. The whole, the profession itself is very emotionally taxing for sure. Cause especially in the emergency part of it, people are very, it's, it's just like human medicine too. Like when it's a loved one, it's literally a loved one that, you know, is in, you know, less than the ideal condition sometimes. And people get hysterical and people get, you know, passionate about them and they, and they might say things that they don't mean and, and you just have to take it on the chin and, and uh, do your best. And, and that's all we can do. We can, all, all we can do is do our best. Um, and then certainly school has its challenges. School is stressful. There's a lot of stuff you have to do. That school is a lot harder than college. Um, I thought I was busy in college and then I got to vet school and I was like, oh, <laughs> this is what busy is. I, you know, you don't really have a lot of free time to yourself which is okay, because you're learning what you need to learn. Um, And then for me, living on the island was a huge challenge. And everyone's like, oh, didn't you go to the beach every day? Like, how how hard can living on an island be? And I was like, I went to the beach maybe once a month if I could, if I had time. Um, You know, we, we dealt with a lot of power outages and um, whenever you went food shopping, there was, you had to go to three different places to get everything on your list. And it was, it was challenging. Um, and then anyone who wants to enter this field, definitely spend a lot of time with veterinarians and get, get a real perspective of it because it's not going to be playing with puppies and kittens all the time. It's going to be hard. It's going to be emotionally taxing, but at the end of the day, you're making a difference in the animal's life and the owner's life as well. I follow you on social media. We're, we're Facebook friends, as I yes. am with a lot of my former pages uh, who worked here at the library. And I do enjoy seeing some of the videos you post of emergency situations yeah. where something is going sideways and then you see the resolution. One of my favorites is there's a very large dog who swallowed a big ball. Yes. And yes. the way the veterinarian pulled the, the ball, got the ball out, well, exactly as you just <laughs> mentioned, everybody's panicking. The owner of the dog is crying uh-huh. Uh-huh. and the veterinarian comes over and very calm and patient and knows exactly what to do and uh, pulls that out and and the dog just jumps up and you know it's just <laughs> wonderful so I enjoy Amazing. seeing some of these videos that are, that yeah. are being posted. Mm-hmm. One question that I always had about veterinary school was how early on do you do you decide what area you're going to specialize in? If- um, for that it depends on the school so I know, yeah. I know some schools they kind of specialize you like I think after like the first year, they say, oh, you want to do like large animal, you want to do horses, cows and pigs and sheep and goats, you go this route and it's, we're going to tailor your education this way. Um, and then, you know, if you want to do small animals, which is dogs and cats, you go the other way. For me, we had to learn everything all the time. Um, you know, in our anatomy courses, we learned, we learned on the dog, the dog was our base model. And then we would learn the horse at the same time we know the cow at the same time and the cat and the sheep and the goat and you know chickens like ev- literally everything we, we we had to learn everything and then um once we graduate we can kind of pick where we go and what we do that's very interesting i was always curious about that so do you have an idea in what direction you're planning on going in more domestic animals yeah. or a farm or yeah um i i like small animal i like dogs and cats I do like um, exotics too. So birds, reptiles, um, pocket pets, we call them like hamsters, ferrets, rabbits. Um, I like, I like all of those. Um, I'm going to do a one-year internship, which I already uh, uh, accepted and got approved for, um, where I'm basically doing rotations throughout a hospital, but I'm, I'm now like a baby doctor. So I'm like starting to make decisions on my own and coming up with plans for my patients, but I can still 
consult with the senior doctors there and kind of discuss my findings and make sure I'm in the right direction before I, I do what I do. And where will that be? What state? I'll be, I'm, I'm moving back to Long Island for a yeah. year. <laughs> At least a year. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. I do say my son's hamster was sick and I actually had to drive 20 miles to find a vet that uh-huh. actually specialized in, uh, in hamsters. So it was, yeah. it was very difficult uh, yeah. to find someone. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it, you know, they need, they, they have a right to a proper life too. I know everyone says, oh, it's just $5 at the pet store for hamsters, get another one. But like, that would make the world of a difference, especially like to your son, to, oh, to yeah, yeah. Absolutely. whoever owns that pet, you know, Absolutely. They, they deserve a life of health too. Good. So what are your plans past that point? Have you mm-hmm. decided where you'd like to set a practice or whether you want to work in an animal hospital or a private practice? Yeah. Um, a lot of that is up in the air at the moment. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to specialize further. Um, I really like radiology. I've been, um, I've been doing some uh, rotations in radiology and I really, really like it, but that involves a whole residency. So that's another three or four years I would take um, to keep learning. Um, I think by the end of my internship, I can decide that if I wanna go right into practice or go back to school essentially and, and learn um, a residency. Um, so that's, that's kind of up in the air right now. And, and I want to kind of get my feet wet in terms and decide then. So are your parents happy you're coming back? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're, they're very, very excited. They're, you know, I've been away essentially eight years. You know, I haven't really spent any of my adult life on Long Island, um, except for a couple months here and there, but but yeah, they're, they're super excited. My family's excited. Um, my friends from college, my friends from high school are excited. So it'll be really good. Now, is your brother home or is he mm-hmm. away at college right now? He's home. He actually just got into graduate school. So he's trying to decide, uh, he's going to Stony Brook. Um, so he's trying to decide if he wants to live at home or, or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Do you have any pets? Yes, I do. I have um, I have a dog that I adopted from St. Kitts. Um, her name is Honey, and I love her. Um, she she lives with me here in Florida. Um, I have two cats at home that live with my parents, and then my parents have a puppy as well. They got her a couple months ago, so she's like kind of mine too. <laughs> Was it hard bringing the dog over from St. Kitts to the United what? States? It was pretty easy ish because it was it, it was kind of like when COVID it was starting and uh, really all they require is a rabies rabies um, vaccination and you know her other shots as well um, and then a letter from the chief veterinarian in St Kitts and that was pretty much it. Hmm. Now I really remember you being very soft spoken when you worked here and <laughs> kind and very patient. How have those traits helped you in your career? Oh, I feel like I, I have good communication skills because of those things. And I, I really try to listen to people's concerns. Um, and I know people are, especially in the emergency setting, people are nervous and they're anxious. And I, I try to hopefully calm them down when I talk to them. Um, And um, patience, I think helps me because I really try and understand the full picture when I'm given an animal. And I try to to make sure I get their entire history and make sure I take everything in consideration before I come up with a plan for them. And, you know, if you don't take that time, I don't think that you can like consider everything that's in play if that makes sense so is there anything that you would uh say to somebody who was thinking about coming to work at the library 
Oh, at the library? Let's see. I just think it's it's a really good place to work. I, I can't rave about it more. Like, I, th I think there's a place for everyone there. There's everybody's interests. Like you can find something you're interested in there and you can even relay your interests to um, whoever you work for. So if you're a page, you can be like, you know, I really like, um, I like children's books. I like kids a lot. And they'll, you know, direct you upstairs. And, and uh, or you can say, you like, like me, like I work, I like working the special projects with Ms. Vollmer. So she was always like, all right, we're doing this today. Let's do it. And, and I would be super excited about it. Like there's, there's something for everyone there. And if you relay those interests, like they'll kind of make sure that you're involved with, with certain things. Do you have a favorite memory from working over at the Brown Public Library? Was, was it the Ooh. goats? That was, that was a good one. Cause that was right when I was leaving for college. Like that was the week before. So that was really, that was pretty significant in my mind. There was, I remember there was like a baby llama there too. And I was mm -hmm. so excited. Miss <laughs> Volmer, you gotta send me that picture when you get a chance. Oh, I will, I will. I found it, yes, yes, uh, I will. absolutely. <laughs> um, what else are my favorite memories? Hmm. Oh, the Christmas parties. I love the <laughs> Christmas parties. And everyone was all dressed up in their Christmas sweaters and we had lots of food and, and um, we would sing, I would sing karaoke with, with the other pages. That was so fun. And I, I remember being like so excited for that. And I just, I don't know. I just like to go meeting, meeting the pages, like seeing them in school. And then we, we would hang out outside of the library and that was always fun. It, it was, I had a lot of classmates who worked there do you still keep up with any of the your friendships staff members at the library? Do you still maintain yeah. any of the, the friendships? Yeah, I'm, I'm friends with them on social media. I'll see them. Um, I haven't seen a lot of them in a while, but uh, we, we do have each other on, on social media. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I don't think I have too many more questions, honestly. Uh, <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Jessica? What else can I talk about? Every time I go to the library, it looks different. So everything always, <laughs> <laughs> everything always like adapts and changes with the times. And I really, I, that's what I really like about it. Like nothing, nothing is kind of static there, which I like. I like mm -hmm. that a lot. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward. I don't think I've been there in a couple of years. I actually need to renew my library card. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I'll see you soon. <laughs> okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and sharing your memories of Brentwood with us. Um, Thank you for having me. I'm honored. <laughs> it was well, a pleasure. Uh, Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See bye. You bye. Soon. Thank you all for joining me for today's show. And I would like to extend a special thank you and congratulations to Jessica, now Dr. Ferrara, by the time this episode airs. Good luck and best wishes moving forward. Join us again next time for more Brentwood stories. Today's music was brought to you again by Dr. Turtle. Check out his music at freemusicarchive.org.